What's up guys, Brad White at Arclife Fab on Instagram, brand ambassador for Everlast Welders. Today I'm gonna show you double miter cuts versus single miter cuts, aesthetic versus structural on square tubing. To set it up for the single miter cut, you set your saw at a 45 angle. As you're cutting down, you never just slam the saw down because you'll pull the blade out and you just want the blade to cut instead of you cutting. That's the purpose of the tool. So double miter, you're gonna cut it on a 45 twice. So you do your single miter cut then you rotate the part 90 degrees and then you cut it at 45 again, leaving one side pointed, the other side square of the point of the tube. As you can see, we have one more cut to do, but that's just the basic top cut for two. Double miter cuts require three cuts of the same type. Up should be nice and tight. Uh, I usually run a little bevel inside just to have a nice little groove for the weld to fit in and to deburr it just from cutting. First we're starting with the single miter. We're using the fireball tool square today. Slide the first one in, the second one in. Meet it up to where you go. Clamp it down. Tack away. So this is the typical setup you're gonna see for like weld tables, structural, heavy duty strength. As your 45 miter comes in, your solid tube base, when it sits here, acts as your strong structural standpoint. Going in, I tack on the corners. I wanna make sure I tack all four corners before I start welding, just to give it room to not pull from the opposite side that I'm welding on and to make sure it stays square and true. Since it's stainless, stainless likes to pull and warp probably more than most other materials, so therefore tacking is important. And I did make sure that I have at least three dabs on each corner to control it. And as I'm welding, I'll weld around. And when I do my next section, I'll start back uh, probably an eighth inch to overcome that and go around. So therefore it's not a trial to constantly wrap around your corners to go. For my welding sequence, I like to flip it over and do the other opposite side first before I do my inside corner and my outside corner. It just gives me a better starting point to know that it's not gonna warp and not gonna move around on me. Starting welding over the tack, coming across the top, and then welding over the other tack on the other inside. So basically I end up double wrapping the corner. 16th wall tubing tends to act pretty much the similar as a 16 gauge sheet metal. So therefore keeping the same welding principles and stuff, um, I just kind of control it manually with the foot pedal as I move along. When I'm doing the outside corners 90 down, I drop the filler on top of the weld instead of in front of the weld. It kind of controls your heat a little bit more, especially on the thinner tubing, the 16 gauge, your 18 gauge, the 20 gauge tubing. It gives you better puddle control and you can see better where you're going and how your heat is carrying over to make sure you get nice penetration. You're using gravity to your advantage dabbing in that way. What I'm looking for on the inside corner is to overlap from the starts and the stops from both sides of how they came in on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit over adding filler and just basically dabbing in the puddle as it comes across. Your inside, you have a little bit more thicker spacing, so I use a 16th inch filler as opposed to the 045 from the other sides. So in order for this leg to fit up properly as it sits on top, you have to grind your weld flush just to make sure, mainly on your ends where you over dab to fill in your corners. I'm just gonna use a standard flap disc just to go in and smooth it out a little bit. That way I don't over grind the thin wall tubing with a stone or a rock. And now you can see that you have a better fit on your inside. Your outside's gonna have some of a gap because of the roll of the outside of the tubing, which is fine. It allows you a nice, perfect area for a bead to fit. Now I'm going to show y'all how to tack it together square. So this one, since it's grounded flush, you have a nice seat. It's gonna go in here. We're gonna use these fireball tool mini squares to get a nice, 90 and 90 fit on the corner. First tack's gonna go on the outside corner. 
And then the next tack is going to follow on the inside corner and then on the sides and the sides. Once you get it all tacked up from this point, it's just welding it all out. Let me get it welded up for you and I'll show you how it goes. Here's your standard miter setup, standard miter top, post legs, all finished and welded up. Now we'll move on to the double miter setup. Seeing as the points are like this, if you fit it up this way, you won't be able to get a tack on the outside to there. So I always fit it up from the top side. And after the clamp down, I'll put a tack right here and right here on the corner. So I got it all clamped up and ready to tack out. Dude, how many clamps did you use? I use all the clamps! I'm gonna tack it on the corners and as close to the point as I can get without going into the point on there because I don't want it to melt over. Keeping with tacking on the corners so that way I can round them out when I weld it out. Once it's tacked up, there's really no difference between the two. You're just welding it out. Let me show you what the result is. As you can see, the single miter on your right is more structurally sound as the tube is supporting the bottom with the whole weight of the tube. The double miter on the, your left is more aesthetically pleasing to some. Um, thicker tubing, you can bevel more, run a single pass or like a root fill with like an S2 or an S6 and then go sili silicon bronze on the fill and then grind it out and you get like a nice bright yellow line in the middle of it. Some like it for furniture when you black the metal as a finish. I don't remember what to say. This is so easy. <laughs> Should I close with that? Our director is terrible. Oh, green weld, mean weld? I'm not talented, I'm just a filler. I'm like Bondo. This is so stressful, I swear. <laughs> Hope you had fun and learned a little bit something. All right, guys, I hope you learned something. Double miter versus single miter. I'm Brad White at ArcLife Fab on Instagram. Brand ambassador for Everlast Welders. Weld mean, weld green.